All right, so today's mini lesson, we, mini lesson, we're going to be looking at fiction and nonfiction again. And our goal today is to look at readers can tell the difference between fiction and nonfiction books. So we're going through the attributes today of what a fiction and nonfiction book looks like. So we're going to understand the difference between the two. So fiction books are not true stories. Fiction books may seem real, but we don't know that they really happen. Nonfiction books are true and contain accurate information. So before we go to the next slide, what are some other things we can add to when it comes to nonfiction and fiction books? Obviously they have a little bit of information here, like we have the different genres, realistic fiction, mystery, historical fiction, science fiction, fantasy, fairy tale, and then nonfiction, uh, there's information, biography, different source information. So you have different parts, but what are some more parts to fiction and nonfiction books? Amelia? Yes, nonfiction books contain facts, accurate information, right? Things that we know to be real in our world. Leslie? Nonfiction books contain historical events. Yes, they'll have historical events in them, and they'll explain it, and it can sound like a story sometimes, but it, it's a real story, right, compared to what a, non, uh, a fiction book would be, correct? What else do nonfiction, or even fiction, if you want to talk about that, what else do these two uh, types of books have? Like this. So yeah, that would be historical fiction, right? Um, so some fiction can take place in a real world, a real event, a nonfiction type of story in a way, but the character is not real. Like Liberty Kids, I don't know if you guys ever watched that, but it's like this uh, old cartoon about the Revolutionary War and the events leading up to it. But the characters aren't real. Now, they interact with George Washington and Benjamin Franklin and stuff like that, who are real people, but they themselves are not. So it's actually a fictional story. Yes, Amelia? I've noticed that fiction and nonfiction can be written in different ways. Like, you can have a nonfiction book written in comics, or you can have a style. Yeah, so let's talk about style a little bit. So Amelia touched on that, let's really talk about that. So they can be written in a similar way, right? They can both be written with just paragraphs and you kind of read through it, or they could be in comic book style if, if that's what the nonfiction writer is attempting to do. But what are some other styles that are unique to nonfiction? Unique to, to nonfiction. Fiction we can pick out pretty easily, but what about nonfiction, what's unique some unique styles, Brecken? Sometimes like biographies have like pictures, biographies in it. So yeah, Brecken's saying, so biographies which are about real people's lives, right? And they'll have pictures, real pictures about that person. Amelia, what are the, some other nonfiction styles? Another style. What's one style, though, that I'm surprised hasn't been brought up yet? It's used in schools all the time, and it's a nonfiction style of book. Everybody should be able to catch on to this one really easily. Let's pick somebody. Yeah, Micah. Can you speak a little louder, please? Text. 
textbook, yeah, textbook. So like your science textbook would be a nonfiction book. Is it super exciting to read all the time? Probably not. But is it at containing accurate information, like what a uh, nonfiction book is supposed to have? Yeah, it is. All right, so what about one more thing? There's a couple other things about nonfiction books that you'll see in nonfiction, but you won't see in fiction. They usually happen at the end of the book, especially in textbooks. There's some things that are there that you don't see in fiction books. Daniel? What does it usually have in it? You, you may have forgot what it's called, but what does it have in it? Um, okay, so it might have some encouragement, maybe. But I'm thinking of a few other things that happens in every single, not almost every single nonfiction textbook or something like that whether you're in college or all the way down to second grade or anywhere in between. Marco? Most textbook fiction books, when the book ends, the book ends with Captain Hogan Hatch or some sort of that, but in nonfiction books, sometimes they just like one paragraph or the last page, they like to cut to the end of the book to sometimes they like to the end Okay, yeah, there's so some nonfiction books, they don't have an ending because they're not telling a story, right? They're just giving the information. So it's not at the end or happily ever after. True. But what else is there in the back of that book? Yeah, glossary. Yeah, thank you, Amelia. That's what I was looking for. So yeah, glossaries and indexes. Glossaries are those uh, areas where they have the words that maybe you don't know, and so they have definitions to them. They tell you where they're at in the textbook, like they have a page number next to them. Indexes will just have the word and a page number next to it, and so you can try to find key ideas or words in the textbook by looking in those key areas. So that's something that's unique to nonfiction. You will not see that in a fiction book. You're not going to see something that has that kind of information. It will, just like Marco said, just have like a happily ever after, this is the end of the story. That's what usually you'll see in the fiction book. All right, so moving right along. So let's think about the books we've read so far this year, which probably isn't too much because we're years old, we just started. Are they fiction or nonfiction? Can you explain what makes these books fiction or nonfiction? So what I'd like you to do in your mini lesson response section, of your notebook. This will be part of your task. Think about those books that you've read so far this year. And I would, if you read in the summer, go ahead and include those books too, since you might not have too many books to list from because it's beginning of school year going to like two weeks. So um, try to add a few books in the summer if you did do some summer reading. And then I'd like you to tell me, are they fiction or nonfiction? And tell me why. Tell me why you believe these to be fiction or non-fictional books. All right, question, Amelia? How many books do you Let's just go with, I'm gonna go with a, a small minimum. Let's go with like, yeah, I was kind of thinking around that number too. So maybe, it, let's go with around, let's do three or four, okay? Somewhere around there, if you can. So that might be your one book so far that you're reading in school for independent reading. That might be maybe the book that you read on Epic a couple of weeks ago, and maybe a book that you read over the summer. Okay, so you could, I think everybody here could probably string together three books that they've read in the past month or two, okay? Yes, Amelia. Oh, yeah. uh, let's just stick with the title, but you have the author, write that down too. Because it might be a little difficult for some of you to remember, ooh, I can't remember who the author's name was, but I do remember the title. Yep, then you write whether it's fiction or nonfiction, and then explain what makes the books that you said are fiction, fiction, and the books that you said are nonfiction, nonfiction. So an easy one, you could pick one of your textbooks for fifth grade. If you have a social studies textbook that Mr. Reed has pulled out for you, that could be one of your books. So 
Okay. So there you go. I gave you a little bit of money there. All right. Any other questions before we start? Yes. 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 Yep, that's a summer book, and so you could include that book in your list if you'd like. All right, and remember, you have to write in cursive. Don't be writing in print, and it needs to go in your tab two, right? Mini lesson response. This is not a reader's response. It's a mini lesson response. So you're responding to the mini lesson, not to what you've been reading. All right. Um, let me pause the video real quick.